show you, maybe in the foreground. Okay. Um, so I just hooked up my uh, my Phantom with the with my Tyrannus, my Free Sky Tyrannus. Beautiful little thing here. Um, I love this radio. It's really great. Um, I've got all my other planes hooked up to it. It's just far more advanced than the regular stock Phantom is concerned. So um, plus it's got better gimbal control. I've got a I've got the Zenmuse gimbal. It's actually my other GoPro is on here, but um, yeah. So it's it's the Zenmuse. Uh, but I wanted a little better range and a better uh, better um, receiver. You know, I know that this X8R is fantastic. Plus, it's super light. It works essentially the same way that the stock one did, which looks like this. This is the one that came in the Phantom. Um, it had. Yeah, it looks like it says, yeah, it says Phantom 2.4 gig RF V3. So this is the V3. I just thought that it would be a little bit better um, investment working with this X8R. It's just got better range, I would imagine, um, and less lag and, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I wanted to show you how I have this hooked up. I have to say, shouts out to Dennis Baldwin. This dude is outstanding as far as working with, um, you know, doing tutorials, programming tutorials on how to get this stuff running. So check him out on YouTube. He's phenomenal. Uh, Dennis Baldwin, again. Uh, so I'm just going to point down here and show you. So um, under here, this is these two guys. This is the PMUV2 and uh, the... Um, the gimbal controller, the GCU V1. Um, this is a Phantom 1, so uh, I had to get this, otherwise I would have had to upgrade it, or I had to buy this, uh, because either that or you upgrade the actual board. Don't mind my poor soldering skills, it's pretty bad in there, but I'll be rubber painting that before I close her all back up, but um, yeah, so that's what these two are. This is the gimbal controller, and then this is what basically converts this uh, stock V1 setup to handle the go, uh, the uh, gimbal, which is the Zenmuse H3 2D. It's not the 3D. You can see it's got the fixed thing here. The other one would actually pivot on this axis, but uh, this is actually fine for my purposes. Um, I've liked it thus far. Um, and I'll be getting something new eventually. I'll be building my own unit uh, if I want to put a 3D gimbal on there. So, um, but this is cool. Uh, you can hook this up using the S bus port. Uh, it was a super easy bind to make, just like any other receiver. Um, but you just use this one cord instead of having all your, uh, you know, your aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder all plugged in to these ports you just use that one and it carries all, all the other signals over so it keeps the wiring pretty lean um, this was actually a second one I'm assuming because it was a second uh, antenna um, either that or it was an X1 port one of the two uh, I actually don't even need this uh, I might hook it up uh, as uh, to another servo on here um, I'm not too sure, but, uh, you know, maybe for some little bomb drops or some fun little mods on the side here once I uh, start getting that heavy into it. But uh, I'm pretty excited. Um, the arming system, I went through, uh, I'm not going to reiterate what Dennis Baldwin went through. Uh, he did a whole lot of explanation as to how to set this up for your fail safes, GPS mode, Addy mode, like, um, pretty much all of that he goes into very good detail so there are two particular videos one is geez, I've got them right, right here you're probably not gonna this isn't gonna look very good but this is the one uh it's uh three flight modes and forced fail safe override that was really awesome um he's doing this on a qav but it's pretty much the same process if you're using the phantom um and then the other one is uh Oh, well, okay. Uh, it's this one, the Tyrannus and X8R receiver S-Bus setup with NASA flight controller. So that's this is the base one. This is how to install it. Uh, and then that other one is just configuring some of the, the uh, different settings to allow you to have uh, all the different flight modes that NASA uh, uh, has and the Phantom actually comes with the standard. Um, 
So I'm not going to cover that. Suffice to say, I've got, um, let me see, how do I actually have this configured? I still need to figure this out because it's uh, still a little new. Um, but I've got uh, GPS lock. Um, uh, so this is GPS Addy. I've got Addy. And then I've got uh, manual mode. Uh, and then this is the forced failsafe override. So this will actually override any of these three flight uh, modes on this position switch here um, just by flipping that. And then I have my uh, orientation control, my IOC uh, control over here. So I've got home lock is up, um, uh, course lock is middle position, and uh, off obviously is... Uh, is all the way down, full down. So um, my gimbal, uh, and, and he actually, on one of his videos, he set that up on this slider here. I don't know how it's going to come out for anyone else, but I noticed that the IOC control, when I uh, hooked this up to the NASA software, immediately defaulted the IOC control on this. So he said right slider, left slider. I had set that up previously, and I just switched it to this because I thought this was a more logical way uh, of you know, setting it up as opposed to having it on this slider here. But other than that, everything is the same. I actually, he didn't mention, and I haven't found any other videos like this, so I'm going to post this um, just for anyone who has any questions about what I did, just because I haven't seen the resources online. Um, the NASA software to boot these motors up was defaulted, I'm assuming, to when I was actually using the old receiver. So it's down and in and hold on both sticks down center um, that's how I had it set up uh, with the Phantom I believe that's how they all come set up um, and it went right to that setting for me and I'm okay with that so I'm just gonna leave it there but I'm assuming I, I don't know about the guys from OpenTX but they're all geniuses in my opinion so I'm sure they've got another way if you have a particular way of wanting to arm you know, if you wanted to use the trainer port real, you know, or something like that, I'm assuming you could do that, um, whatever your preference was. Um, yeah, there's not too much else. I haven't actually installed it yet, um, but I know that I need to actually run these 90 degrees, so I'm probably going to one, run one that way, uh, and then run this one actually down where the standard one would have went, so it's going to come out here and then I'll just tape that to the legs so that I'll have them basically, you know, sort of at a 90 like that. And that should give me uh, the best um, reception for this uh, receiver. And then I am going to be installing um, an FPV transmitter. I've found a unit that's really, really lightweight and should be able to actually fit in here with all this garbage. Um, it's so bulky and ridiculous with all these wires, but hey, it it works and uh, I've been nothing but pleased with uh, flying this in the field so I'm looking forward to getting this guy up and running and uh, you know um, yeah feeling a little bit more uh, uh, grown up with <laughs> a real grown up radio flying it so uh, uh, until next time I might actually have some additions to this video but we'll see um, cool enjoy guys